Today, I'm going to show you some hidden features for your Steam Deck, things that most people just don't know about. But you don't have to use a Steam Deck in order for this to be useful because a lot of this is going to work on any Steam-based system, handheld or under otherwise, Windows or Linux, it doesn't matter. Today, I wanna to teach you the basics of setting up Steam input, as well as show you how to utilize some of the more complex options that are available in there. And I'm going to be using Oblivion in order to teach you how to do this. No, not that Oblivion. There we go, that Oblivion. But the same principles that I'm showing you here are going to work on any game. So if that sounds good, get comfortable, get subscribed. Let's get started. Let's start with the best way to configure FlickStick. For those of you that don't know, FlickStick is a newer way to control camera in games where you tilt the right stick in the direction that you want the character to look. Imagine that your character is the stick and whichever way you tilt the stick the character automatically turns and faces that direction the advantage to flick stick is that you can switch directions faster than you can with a mouse the disadvantage is how much of a pain in the ass it is to configure well since my last tutorial about flick stick valve has updated how this works and i have to say it is incredibly improved over the previous version first of all let's set up the right stick to control the camera First, press the Steam button on the left and then go into the controller settings and over to Edit Layout. On the left side of the screen, tab down to Joysticks and then set the right joystick behavior to Flick Stick. Now, press the Steam button again and here you can test it out. Here you can see that pressing down on the stick actually makes my character turn around and face behind them instead of looking down at the ground. So you're probably wondering, okay, how do I look down at the ground then? Well, flick stick goes hand in hand with gyro, so we need to turn that on. Press the Steam button again, and on the left-hand side, go to the gyro tab, and then set gyro behavior to gyro to mouse, which is currently in beta, but works really well. Before we leave this part, open up the setting cog and make sure that your button behavior is right pad touch or right stick touch. This only works on the Steam Deck or the HoriPad Steam Controller because you need capacitive sticks or touch pads in order to get this to work. Hopefully more controller manufacturers give us capacitive sticks in the future. Press the Steam button again and give it a shot. It's gonna feel really strange at first, but over time, you might be able to get used to it. And if you can, you're really going to wonder how you ever played without it. But we're not done yet because first we have to configure it. Press Steam again. Under the Joysticks tab, on the right joystick, open the cog menu, and here you can see the angle calibration slider. Because each game is different, you're going to have to configure it on a game-by-game -game basis. Let me show you how to do that. Press B to back out of this menu, and then in your main menu, go up to Buttons, and then go to Face Button Behavior. Change that from whatever it is to Button Pad. Now let's set the button to a new function. Don't worry, this is only temporary. Once we figure out the right number for this, we can delete this setting and set it up however you want. Press the selector and then use R1 to go over to the last tab, which is labeled camera. Here we have three options. Set it to turn camera 360 degrees. I usually just leave these two sliders alone, but you can adjust them if you run into issues in whichever game you're trying to configure. Press confirm, now go back to your game by pressing the Steam button. In game, you gotta pick an object to look at. For me, I'm picking this lantern that is outside of the arena in Cyrodiil. Make sure that your cursor is right on an object and then press the A button. If the game is configured properly, your character is going to spin all the way around and you'll be looking at the exact same target that you started with. As you can see, I am not configured properly, so I need to make some adjustments. Press Steam, go into Joysticks, and then set the settings cog for Flick Stick. The slider controls how much you'll turn when doing a 360 degree spin. Further to the right spins more, further to the left, left spins less. I went past my lamp, so my number must be too high. I'm going to adjust it until I find the right number, which for this game turns out to be 3142. I figured that out after doing some experimentation. If you tap on the text box, you can just type it in. Or if you want to use the slider and it's moving too much, you can press the Y button to make smaller adjustments. Now that I've dialed it in, let's see how it works. I look at the lamp and then I press A and I come right back to looking at the lamp again. It means I've nailed it. But before we're done setting up FlickStick, I'm going to set up my snapping settings 
and I'm gonna set up my snap angle to 90 degrees. Now I can only look left, right, forward, and behind me, and then I fine tune my aim with the gyro. And then finally, let's press Steam, go up to buttons, and hover over the A button and press X to delete that turn camera 360 degrees setting, because we don't need it anymore. By the way, I'm Bill, and welcome to the Nerd Nest. I cover hardware reviews, video game news, tutorials, podcasts. So if you enjoy this video, you find it interesting, entertaining, or useful, do me a favor and click that subscribe button. I'm closing in on 90,000, and I would absolutely love to hit that number by the end of the year. Next, I wanna show you how to set up radial menus for your joysticks instead of just the trackpads, because you might be playing on a device that doesn't have trackpads, or you're using a controller and your Steam Deck is docked. Steam's virtual menus is one of the most powerful ways to customize your games using Steam input. So let's jump in. Press the Steam button and then controller settings, click edit layout, and then on the bottom, virtual menus. Tap add virtual menu and give it a name. I'm gonna call this one like because if this is useful or interesting, liking goes a long way to making this video succeed. Next, you're gonna to wanna to pick uh, your menu type. Because I'm making a menu that's linked to the joysticks, I'm going to go with a radial menu. Tap the pencil to edit your menu. Now you might be tempted to press add command right here. Let me show you why you don't wanna do this. So don't do what I'm about to do. I'm gonna add a B here. Now, now you can see on the left-hand side, there's a circle with a B in the middle of it. A radial menu with just one input is kind of silly, so let's add some more. I know that Oblivion can have eight hotkeys for different weapons and spells, so I'm going to set up buttons one through eight. Now that I've done that, you can see why I wouldn't want that first item. It's sitting in the middle of the radial menu and it's kind of hard to hit reliably, so I'm going to remove B by pressing X on the face buttons. Perfect. Now, because I'm going to be using this with a joystick, I want to change how the system executes commands on here. So navigate down to general and then set it to continuous. Okay, we set up our menu. How do we access it from the joystick? Well, with 99% of games that I play, I'm going to want the left joystick to control movement and I want the right joystick control the, to control the camera. So how do I assign this to a joystick if I only have two joysticks? Welcome to action sets. Let's navigate down to action sets and use the gear icon next to default. Tap add layer and we'll give this a name. I'm gonna call this subscribe because I'm that guy that asked you to subscribe. Now, press B to get back to the tab navigation and then go up to buttons and then down to bumpers. This can be any button you want, including the back grips, but I'm gonna be using L1 because that's the one I prefer in this particular case. Let's assign a command and then move over to action sets. And in this case, I want to use the action layer when I'm holding down the L1 button. So I'm going to select hold action set layer. It's going to ask me which layer I want. I'm going to pick subscribe. And then underneath it, it says display name when changed and beep when changed. I have never had these work reliably. I have no clue why, but that's okay. Let's just hit confirm. So now when I hold down the L1 button, it's going to activate this layer, but this layer is currently an exact copy of the default layer. It's inheriting all of its settings from that layer. So that isn't actually gonna make any changes for me. So what we need to do is navigate to the right action layer using the L1 and R1 buttons. You can see that I'm on the right set, so I'm going to navigate to my joysticks and then you can see that they are currently inheriting their settings from default. That's the other action set that I have. I'll tap on the right joystick behavior and change that to like, which is the name of my radial menu. Press the steam button here. You can now see that my right stick is still acting as flick stick, but if I hold down L1 and then use my stick, the radial menu comes up. Now in Oblivion, it already has radial menus on its own, so this is kind of duplicated, but this is just to illustrate how you might want, want to use it. But I'm running into an issue because whenever I want to add a weapon to my hotkeys, what you're supposed to do in Oblivion is hold the button that brings up the wheel. And then you're going to want to hold the button that you assign, then click the item from your inventory, but the mouse keeps moving on me. So we're going to disable gyro in this action layer, press steam, and then get to your main Steam input menu. Now, if you look in the top left, press R1 and get to your action layer, and then tap Gyro. 
Here you can see the gyro behavior is set to inherited, meaning it's going to use everything from default. I'm going to tap that and set it to disabled. Press Steam and try it out. I'm going to put my mouse over the bow. I'm going to hold down L1. I'm going to push up on my right stick and then pull the trigger and bam, I just assigned my item. Now I'll assign the dagger to slot two. Now I'll close my inventory and I can swap weapons easily. Let's jump back into that menu and customize it a bit more. I'm gonna press the Steam button and then I'm going to navigate down to Virtual Menus, press the pencil icon, and then you can see this dashed circle on the left. We can assign whatever we want here. So I'm going to put a bow and arrow there as an icon instead of a number. I can adjust the colors if I want and then hit Done. Now we can see that I've changed my icon, but it's also showing me the number that it's pressing on the keyboard and I don't really care what button it's pressing on the keyboard. So let's get rid of that. General on the left and then disable show command glyph in tooltip and boom, it's gone. Press Steam to get back into the game and let's give it a try. Perfect. Okay, let's move on and add a different kind of menu. This will be for a trackpad instead of a stick. So we're gonna press Steam and then head down to virtual menus. We're gonna make a new one. We'll call this one podcast because I have a podcast and you should check it out. It's right here on this YouTube channel and we talk about gaming news each and every week. I'm going to make this one a touch menu and then I'm going to tap the pencil icon and start building it. I'm going to be using the buttons F1 through F5 as well as F9 and T. Because this is a touch menu, I am fine with using the slot for touch menu button one. I'll go through and put icons on here while I'm at it. Okay, now that I have my menu set up, let's put it on the left trackpad. Navigate to trackpads, make sure that you are on your default, not on any of your action layers, and then set the left trackpad behavior to podcast. Press the Steam button, and now you can see I can easily navigate my journal to get to each tab quickly in the game, which is a lot easier than using the mouse for navigation. But I don't like how I have to interact with the left trackpad. I have to touch the left trackpad, the menu comes up, and then I have to push in on the trackpad in order to make it activate. If you like that behavior, that's perfectly fine, but I prefer this. Press the Steam button, navigate to your new virtual menu, and then press the pencil. Go to General and set Touch Menu Activation Style from Click to Touch to Release. Now, press Steam and test it out. Awesome. Another feature of the Steam Deck that I don't think very many people are using is hidden in the joystick settings. I want to be able to control this game like it would any other controller-based game, except this is a mouse and keyboard game, and most keyboards are digital, and contr controllers tend to be analog, which means normally on PC games, the sprint is bound to a button that you either toggle on and off, or you have to hold down when you're sprinting. I don't want to waste an entire button on my Steam Deck doing that. I have analog joysticks, so let's see what we can do. Press the Steam button. Get back to the main menu, tap joysticks, and then on the on the left joystick, I have it set to direction pad with WASD controlling how I move. But if I scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see this command, outer ring command. This tells Steam input to send whatever input you tell it to the system when you push the stick as far as you possibly can. I know that in Oblivion, the shift button is the run button, so I'm going to bind that. Let's see what happens. Press Steam to get back into the game. If I push the stick a little bit, I move full speed. And if I push it all the way, I slow down. That's the opposite of what I want. That's okay. Go back into Steam by pressing the Steam and then tap the cog wheel next to your left joystick behavior, tap outer ring, and then scroll down if you need to and turn on outer ring command invert. Let's test it out. And that seems to be working okay. If you made it this far in the video, let me know by leaving a comment, nice tutorial below, and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right until the end. What are some Steam Deck tips and tricks that you think are hidden features and features that you might just not understand and are looking for a tutorial about? Let me know in the comments below and I might make a video about them. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. And before you get out of here, check out the latest episode of my podcast. You can see it right here. Thanks for watching. Stay rad.